Hey everyone, it's Wednesday afternoon, it's 2.30. You have Donnie here with your live Innovation Fika on LinkedIn, your innovation coffee break that comes to you every Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. Swedish with a half an hour of chit chat about innovation, startups, entrepreneurship, new ideas, and some really cool people. Uh, to start with, as always, my name is Donnie. I work in Stockholm at the biggest tech university, KTH, where I help researchers and students realize their ideas. And uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Donia Siligones, on all other platforms as well. But LinkedIn is my main platform. I post almost daily on entrepreneurship, startups, innovation, new ideas, and stuff like that. So follow me on LinkedIn and join the conversation. I like interaction. So comment on my posts, uh, disagree with my posts, whatever. Just you know, just be part of the discussion. You can also follow me on uh, Patreon now, Patreon.com/innovationfika, where I upload all of these these episodes. The Innovation Fika episodes, my Wednesday live broadcasts, they go on Patreon. You can follow me there for all of my posts and also all of the video content. And of course, you can subscribe to uh, my newsletter. Go to innovationfika.com and subscribe where I you know, send out weekly updates on the content that is coming and uh, that has been as well and some thoughts. So if you're in Sweden, you can also, for uh, simplicity, just text Fika to 71140. Enough about that, enough about me. Um, today, we're talking about the video, live and recorded video, streaming video, different kinds of video content. And I am uh, thrilled to invite into this Innovation Fika studio, my virtual studio, a, um, a good friend, an old friend, and also uh, the co-founder of a Swedish startup called StreamPal. And we'll be chatting about uh, video streaming. So as usual, please, uh, add all of your questions uh, to the uh, to the chat, and we will take questions and comments as they come along. But for now, here we go, Mr. Victor Tazma. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having <laughs> having me. <laughs> great, to great, have to you, uh, great to have you on the show, um, and uh, super cool to speak about uh, you and your efforts with. Uh, let's see here, StreamPal, right? StreamPal IO. That's the startup name, correct? That's correct. That's correct. Yes. And um, so, and I will just do this so people see you as well. Victor, Victor Tasman. So, Victor, tell us a bit about who you are and what is StreamPal. Let's start with that. Yeah. So, my name is uh, Victor Talsma. We uh, recently launched our company called StreamPal. And uh, StreamPal is essentially a video monetization platform. Um, if you want to simplify it a little bit, it's essentially a Shopify for video content. So if you have a, a bunch of video content, whether it's educational, uh, entertainment, health and fitness, uh, you have a YouTube channel, but you say, okay, cool, I have all this awesome video content that I want to sell to an audience. Um, how do I go about doing that? Then you essentially go to you stream pal, you choose a theme which you can customize exactly how you want, um, upload your videos, choose a subscription model such as pay-per-view or, or subscription, and then launch your entire website uh, on your own domain to your audience. That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Since I have a you know a slight insight into this, I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that I'm hardcore trying to monetize my video content, but I've been looking for mm -hmm. platforms for you know where should I put my video content and how else I do it. One thing that I noticed, and I won't mention any competitors' names here, uh, but one thing I noticed about your platform when we started talking as well was that. Mm -hmm. You have the you know the homepage builder, the template builder, which makes it a lot easier yeah. to yeah. to create your own theme and design, right? Exactly, exactly. So we have a, about I think four themes right now, uh, which you can choose depending on on your purpose. So some are a bit more tailored towards ent entertainment, some a bit more tailored towards uh, education, and from that template you can essentially start dragging and dropping, uh, customizing your own website as you as you would like to have it. Um, to kind of set the, the foundation for creating your own uh, storefront. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, as I said, I, I always encourage the audience to come with a lot of comments and questions. And we're getting, I mean, Alexander, he just said, yes. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you, Alexander. Awesome, yes. Uh, hoping it means, Victor, continue, go do. Perfect, thank you, Alexander. But keep posting questions and comments in the in the chat as well. So we, but a question mm. then uh, regarding this, you know, monetization of video content mm. or monetization of content. Mm. What yeah. is the, you know, what's the idea behind that? I mean, what about YouTube? Isn't that, isn't that working? Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, depends. There are a couple of different solutions. If you want to sell video or monetize video, you could, as you said, go to YouTube. Uh, you could upload your videos and try to drive a lot of traffic to those views in order to, to those videos in order to generate ad sales. You can go to Patreon, for example, as you mentioned in the introduction, and kind of have your your videos there and short subscription. Uh, StreamPal is more for those who uh, who want to kind of build their own website and kind of evolve into a real video business. Um, so, for example. Patreon, as you mentioned, focuses a lot more on supporting your fellow creators. So it's a bit more of a kind of donation setup. And that's also on a on Patreon's yeah. platform. So if you create a, a video service there, it's Patreon slash Donny. Uh, this is for people who might want to create uh, their own video streaming website, almost almost like a Netflix, and have it on their own URL. Uh, so yeah. you're essentially going from decent, uh, centralized and decentralized. Uh, and you're creating your own video storefront and essentially being able to build a business from there where you also own the customers, you own the videos, choose the subscription model. Uh, so it's a bit different in that sense. Mm -hmm. And in comparison to YouTube, uh, you rely on essentially ad sales uh, where you get a, a slice of the pie from all the advertisements that are shown on your channel. This is essentially selling your video content. So it's more premium, it's more in-depth video content that you're selling directly to your audience. I mean, that's, I mean, that's interesting. I, I mean, I compare a Patreon with like, you know, medium, you know, where you can, where you can mm. write stuff. Um, but it's also, you know, you're on the medium platform and you hope that you will, you know, uh, buy everybody else going to medium and they'll also find you kind of a thing while Patreon is more of a donation thing, you know, art, artists and things like this. Um, exactly. And of course, I <laughs> think, thank you, David. Here it is. Go, Victor. Thank you, David. <laughs> uh, Alf, we're getting in one uh, question here. Alf uh, from Alf Field Materials. Do you have your own video player or do you use a third party software? Uh, a, a concrete question there from Alf. Yeah, we've actually built our own video player. Um, so a lot of the solutions we've, we've integrated into the platform, uh, we built ourselves and we don't really rely on, on third party software um, in order to. Essentially, um, so on the short answer, we have, we do have our own video player. Okay, so but it's it's all about as I understand it, it's all about actually if you want to build sort of your own uh, storefront with your own name and your own look and feel. If I have mm -hmm. a, if I would, no, I don't give yoga classes online. But if I would be giving, mm -hmm. I mean, I could use that to create a, a storefront for that, or if I had educational content, as you said. Exactly, and I think the alternative to let's say. StreamPal would be, if you don't want to go the StreamPal route, you then maybe go to WordPress uh, and you would have to pick a theme. Yeah. You'd have to build out that, that, that website either by doing it yourself um, or by hiring someone to do it for you. Once you have the, the visual elements or kind of the, the design of your website done, then you have to connect to a, a video CMS. You have to connect to a hosting platform. You have to connect to, let's say, Memberful, where you can accept descriptions. Uh, so instead of connecting or building a website from scratch in, let's say, WordPress, uh, you can essentially, and then connect to all these different plugins, which are expensive and need maintenance. Um, I'll source that part to us, essentially, uh, where you can easily create your own website and then have all the solutions integrated. Everything sounds awesome and incredible, of course. <laughs> but, but, but if we if we just take a step back and talk about you know the mm -hmm. the the startup part and the entrepreneurship part, how many people are you today? Mm -hmm. You're you're based in Stockholm, everybody, or or is every everybody in Stockholm? We have most people in Stockholm, so three people in Stockholm yeah. and then one in Ukraine. And okay. so it's and how it's long, me. And how long, yeah, how long have you been working on on this sort of this startup? Yeah, so me and my co-founder David, we started um, uh, developing StreamPal in November last year, and uh, we launched in August this year. So essentially, I think this is our fifth week. Um, but it all started with uh, me and David and my co-founder. We worked at a company called Starfo before, which is a bit similar to to Patreon, uh, where it was a, a centralized platform where people could upload video content and then sell it to your audience essentially on a on an 80 20 model i think kind of similar to patreon uh whilst we were working there we had a, a lot of conversations with with bigger creators video creators and then also a lot of companies who said it's it's a cool idea to be able to sell your video content online but we don't necessarily want to do it on starflow's platform uh, we want to create our own more white label solution where we can kind of own the entire experience uh, own the customer uh, but have it as but sell video content online but do it on our own terms kind of um, so that's where the idea was started. And then we started looking into StreamPal and, and developing, it, developing it from there. But that's kind of a fast development from when you said November to August. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've had, 
I mean, long and short, depending on who you ask. I, you know, I was impatient. I wanted to go come up faster, but uh, it definitely has been uh, great progress. And it's fun to see, especially now looking back on uh, the progress we made over time. Um, so it's been, I think, it was roughly nine months uh, of development yeah. until we got well, to this point. Uh, that's the, I mean, I usually make a joke about you know, the entrepreneur's dilemma is that you want everything to be done tomorrow, but you know that mm. nothing will be released until next year. Kind of a yeah, thing, exactly, right? exactly. This paradox of time yeah. going on. But what what mm. have, what have been the the biggest obstacles for you? I mean, you had this idea. You probably saw the vision of this is what it's supposed to be. But what was the biggest obstacles mm. for you to get from when you got the idea to sort of where you are today? When you're actually launched and you're starting to get you know first traction. Mm. I mean, luckily for me, uh, my co-founder David, he's a bit more, uh, he's a bit more of the techie guy or the tech, techie, technical co-founder. So uh, I kind of uh, put most of most of efforts on on him. Uh, so I've been, you know, spitballing ideas with him, but it's it's mainly he has been driven uh, dri driving that process forward. Um, so I've been more oriented on the on the business development side uh, side of things. Uh, but David has been an, an awesome guy in in keeping the progress uh, going forward and uh, actually developing the platform. Yeah, but I mean, it, I, I can imagine like everybody else. I mean, it's not, it's like long evenings and weekends and, and uh, a lot of time that goes into actually getting some. It's, I mean, it's always, it always looks so easy when you see something launched, but you forget about the, not only the building part, but also the thinking part that went into it. So, and what do you, exactly, see, what exactly. do you see the the big challenges now then? I mean, now that you're sort of out, I mean, most people say, Let's just build an app and then we're finished. Yeah. You know, and they and they launch it and mm. then they go, ah, I'm done it. I've, mm. I've you know, I launched an app on App Store amongst a billion other apps. So, what are your yeah. sort of biggest yeah. challenges at the moment? We actually, since as you mentioned, we we launch our platform, but we're the ones who launch the platform. So we want to get people kind of on the platform in order to test it out to see what kind of feedback they had if they if there were any features they would like to see, anything they would like to remove. So we actually launched on AppSumo, uh, which is a a marketplace where you essentially give out good deals for your for your software uh, and have people come on board and try it out, and and so that has been a great experience. We launched a couple of weeks ago, and so we had people from essentially all over the world with different use cases in mind going through our platform and sending us like de super detailed emails, um, mm -hmm. essentially requests on different features. Um, so that's been kind of step one, um, getting people's actual opinions so in this case actual opinions being paying customers and uh, seeing what they have to have to say and what, what do you like to see or what do you like to improve um so that was the kind of the first the first milestone we had in mind getting a bit of a, a beta customer group and now the second one is essentially scaling up when it comes to uh, to customers yeah um so that's the one we mm, yeah, sorry, and, and that's 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 an interesting uh, that, that that part just getting customers that that's yeah, mm. easy but that's, but that's your job David, David can job. sit back and he can sort of uh, he can sit down and exactly. put his feet up. Now, exactly. now it's your turn to get working. So, David, it's all it's He's getting awfully hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, just to focus mm. on one of the parts that you said there. Mm. What was there anything you know when you when you went on AppSumo and you got the you got the feedback from the people? Was there anything there where you got something back and you said, "Wow, this was completely different what we, what we thought people wanted from the beginning." I think uh, we had a, a customer from Taiwan whose name is Will, uh, and he was he spent like one and a half hours just going through our platform without even buying, and then sent us a super detailed letter uh, asking about um, the customization of the of the platform. Um, so you can do a lot when it comes to design on the home page when you're not a logged in user uh, essentially. But for logged in users, we had a bit more limitations. It was more of a video library uh, than creating kind of a dedicated landing page where you have all your videos. Um, and we thought, okay, yeah, it looks great before buying or right before you purchase, but then when you purchase, you're on essentially in a video library without maybe such a great experience. Um, so we actually talked to him and we implemented a couple of days ago where you can both design your logged in state or the user's logged in state versus logged out state, uh, okay. which was something we're like, of course, we should be able to, to have this. Um, so that was one more concrete piece of feedback. Yeah. And I think, but that's, I think that's, I think that. Okay, so the, the feedback apart, but I think the the whole idea of, you know, don't be afraid of trying your idea to a group mm -hmm. of beta customers. You know, you have to try it before you launch it. I had a discussion just this this uh, before lunch with a a, uh, a KTH innovation startup uh, that are thinking of, you know, oh, we have this idea of a business model, and we don't, we don't know how to validate it, and and I said, well, you mm -hmm. know, just mm -hmm. just 
launch a beta version or get in mm. touch with 50 or 100 people that are in your mm. target group and speak to them and let them determine yeah, yeah. and okay as you mentioned as well you know real real feedback or just the the face value feedback but mm. once you get you have to put your things out there you have to speak to people you have to yeah. launch something and be prepared for people to come back and say no actually i want to use it this way and because my experience mm. of launching things is that whatever i launch people would have a different opinion on how they want to use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, um, and I think sp spinning off on that as well, um, I think a lot of people launching a product, they want to hold off with their different acquisition channels, whether it be outreach or, or ads, because they don't want to burn their customer um, without having a product. Um, but one thing we've learned as well is that you, you have an idea of execution mm -hmm. and you're thinking, okay, these things are going to be going to be spot on for us but then you try it out you, you you learn a lot from that process and you might not you might realize that those two things that you thought were perfect might not be perfect yeah. and so by trying those things out beforehand um you first figure that out and if it works great you have someone on your email list uh to say hey we're, we just launched exactly and they will probably be your best ambassadors as well because they've been part of like a co-creation process and they feel very strongly about the product so that is something that i remember another a guy I met when I was in Silicon Valley, a guy called Nireal. He wrote the book Hooked about creating mm -hmm. uh, uh, digital services that um, you know hab habitually get you to use them. And then he had, and he, that was so successful. So then he had to write a book about how to disconnect from services. But that was a, anyways. But he uh, he had eight hundred people in a user group that he he wrote everything online, his book, mm -hmm. and he had eight hundred mm -hmm. people commenting on his text and adding ideas and. And other people mm -hmm. were saying, are you stupid? You're giving away your book and your text to 800 people. And he said, look, I've just, I've just got 800 first customers. These people are my, yeah. you know, they're the die hard people. They're my salespeople. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. I'm not going to sell to 800 people. I'm going to sell to 800,000 people. So exactly, don't, exactly. Be, don't be afraid to, to get out there with your thing and bring mm -hmm. people on board and invite to co-creation. And I'm just happy yeah. to see that yeah. it's been working for you. And I, I hope that Okay, now we'll see. I mean, we don't know yet, right? They, you're launched mm. now, and, and uh, who? But who do you see? I mean, do you see any trends? Let's say, do you see any trends in the in the like the like uh, online you know video market, like in you know everything from influencers to YouTubers? What what do you see happening mm. out there? I think uh, what we've seen, for example, taking YouTube as an example, um, YouTube is a is a great way to get exposure, uh, but it's not necessarily a great way to get paid. Um, so I think that unless you have, let's say, a lot of views, you won't really make a good living off that. But there are a lot of people who have educational content and have cultural value where maybe YouTube, Instagram, and all these different platforms are a great way of bringing exposure, but not maybe a great way to monetize. Um, so I think that was a slight slight info there. But I'm, if I'm thinking in bigger terms, there are kind of two trends that we're, we're seeing. Uh, the first is that video content is becoming or essentially growing and growing every year across all formats. Um, so that when there's learning or consuming news or whatever it may be, uh, video is growing and will, will continue to grow. And uh, the second one is that people are now more willing to pay for content. So five, six years ago, everything was as driven. Nobody bought any content because you got it for free. But now since there's such an abundance of, of content out there, people are willing to pay someone just to get the like, okay, this is what I need to learn. Instead of going through YouTube, several several pages of YouTube, uh, going around Google or actually Googling, how should I learn about a certain topic? If there's an authority figure um, in a certain in a certain, certain niche and they provide a, let's say a course for a hundred bucks, you're like, okay, this is everything I need. Um, mm -hmm. So video growing across all formats and then people being willing to pay for content are essentially yeah. like the two more macro trends uh, that we that we've paid attention to. But, but I, again, coming back to the, the second part there, that I think that people have, I'm not going to say always, but I mm. think that the, you know, the will to pay for curated content, the will to pay for something mm. that somebody else has taken the effort to put together, be it, mm. I mean, one of the, I remember, you know, back in the day when you, when, when there was a record business and, <laughs> mm. and they sold records, be it CD-ROMs mm. or whatever, there was a, in Sweden, there was a record called Absolute Music. It was a collection of, you know, the, the greatest hits at that specific time. And like every month or every six, three or four months, they put out a new sort of album of, you know, it was basically a top 40, but in a, on an album form. 
I mean, that was mm. one of the most sold records in Sweden, long standing, you know, the absolute music records, because somebody mm. had taken, you know, somebody had taken the time and effort to curate and put together these are the best 10 songs or the only 10 songs you need to listen to right now. And people mm. paid for that. And I think we're kind of seeing the same thing now. And there's, you know, th there's so much to find out there that I'm prepared mm. to actually you know pay somebody to put it together to, for me or at least connect it in one place and especially as you say if it's if it's an, any kind of authority and somebody i trust uh in to actually you know, deliver the right content it you know it should work exactly cool. exactly so then i i mean fingers crossed uh where do you, where do you see yourself like in uh, let's say two three years i mean where do you see stream in uh, in two three years well, that's an interesting question, and one I haven't thought about myself that much because I'm, I'm I'm much more into micro things uh, right now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how would you like to see Streamfile having grown, of course, both platform wise and and customer wise? Uh, but I would like to see ourselves having created a product that creates a lot of value, first of all, uh, to to our customers. I think that's really the cornerstone number one. Uh, I think if if you have if you have a, a good product, then word of mouth and all these other things will spread. Um, but uh, I would like to see ourselves having built up a bit of a team, um, mm -hmm. having customers. At least, maybe you know, worldwide is a is a big term, but uh, have customers in different different regions and different uh, niches. And I think that would be a, a great start, and uh, kind yeah. of take it from there. Ah. Do you have any dream? Do you have any dream content creators that uh, you'd be awesome to get on the platform? I mean, I know uh, we have one person in the team who loves, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the word now, but the Dutch Iceman, so to speak. What's his name? Um, Van. <laughs> oh, just because of that, I, I can't come up anyway. with the name. Yeah. Uh, but um, I think for me, it's not necessarily as much a, a person as it is creating a website that both provides value and is very. Uh, like visually aesthetic. I want to create a service. I want our customers to create uh, extremely, for lack of a better term, cool services um, mm -hmm. that are both for a lot of value, but are also uh, very visually aesthetic. Um, so cool. I think that's is more of an idea of a service than a service uh, itself. And I actually remember the name now, Wim Hof. Ah, okay. That's Sorry, say yeah. Uh, Wim it? Hof. Okay. And he so does what? Uh, he is. Um, He's created kind of a cult following in like the uh, cold shower, be out in, in like cold exposure uh, <laughs> world. So this is like really, it increases your immune system and it has all these health benefits. Um, so that's that's one person we have in mind. Okay. Well, well, fingers crossed for that. And if if he by any chance, or if anybody watching knows that guy, make sure they get him in touch with uh, the guys at Stream Power. Uh, you know, the reach of, <laughs> the reach of social networks. Anyway. We're getting close to the end. This is only a half an hour coffee break, me having a chat with nice people. And as always, our guests uh, leave us with, uh, you know, three top tips uh, of whatever business they are in or whatever they're trying to help uh, create in the world. And hmm. of course, then for this show, we have Victor Talsma's top three tips with, is it succeeding with video content or what is it? What are your top three Yeah, tips? I think so. At least succeeding with selling video content. So. Okay. So Victor Pretty tells close. my top three tips for selling video content online. And tip number one being choose, choose a, niche a niche with passion. 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 Yes, explain. <laughs> exactly. So I think this is especially true for, for or true for, for most people and whatever they want to create. But I think especially true in video where you are in front of the camera. Um, so if you're if you're doing something in and something you're very passionate about, that will kind of see, you'll be seen through the, the um, or that people will see it in you. So they'll see that you're authentic, people will see that you're passionate, and people will kind of buy into your concept. Uh, if you're doing something you're not passionate about, people will, will see that and they won't believe in it. So I think that's the, the step number one or tip number one. Okay, cool. And tip number two, create a content pipeline. Yes, so uh, there's kind of two parts to this. The first one is creating a content pipeline for, let's say, your current subscribers or current customer group. Um, you know, c consistency is key, so you want to give them a predictable pipeline of what's what's next to come. Uh, and the flip part of that is generating new customers, essentially. Uh, and, you, and you do this by using your social media as a, as kind of a, a lead generation platform. Um, so also plan on producing consistent content that you launch your socials in order to drag in more customers or attract yeah. more customers. 
And is there any, is that just me curiously, is there any social media platform that you see is better or different when it comes to specifically video content to find this? I mean, if you talk about lead generation, is mm -hmm. there any, or is there just the same, same everywhere? What, what do you, anything? I, I mean, we've tried, we've tried Instagram, we've tried TikTok, we've tried YouTube, uh, and I've, Given that it's video content, we've seen that video content or YouTube rather is is the better the better medium since it's it's all about video. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay then. And uh, tip number three: build a community. Yeah, and I think this goes true for uh, launching a video service or just us at Streampal building a building a video business. Um, getting having a, especially in the beginning uh, a great relationship with your with your customers. Um, Kind of builds a community, which leads to word of mouth, which kind of in turn builds a bigger community, which then leads to network effects. So I think creating as much value as you can for both your initial viewers, but for every every viewer or customer that you have uh, is key. Just because you build a community, they're they're loyal to you, and they also spread the word, uh, spread the word to their friends. Yeah. Thank you. So That's those were the, the quick three tips. It's really good. <laughs> I, mean, I think that these, I mean, these are both like generic tips for exactly. anybody who yeah. wants to succeed in, in you know and in, in, but it also specific for of course selling video content but i mean a lot of the, yeah. a lot of things you said are also really good for entrepreneurs in general when it comes mm -hmm. to uh, that's going on and we have of course uh thank you ali here that was awesome love your idea thank you very much for support thank you ali. thank you ali uh awesome and uh, we have lots of other questions which are specific about uh, the the program the the product but i will Tell everybody online that if you have specific uh, product questions for Victor and the team at Streampal, please go to their website or continue the discussion here in the, on LinkedIn or connect with them on LinkedIn, and they can answer all your questions about payment solutions and whatever it might be. I really cool speaking to you, Victor. Thank you for being on the show. As I said, a half an hour coffee break with nice people and cool ideas. I wish you all the best of luck and uh, look forward to having you on the show in two or three years again. Then, as maybe yeah. you know. We're the biggest uh, video monetization platform in the world kind of thing going on. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> also, awesome. well, thank you. We'll thank talk you again. To the world. <laughs> thank you so much. Me. And everybody uh, listening in and watching, thank you for the comments. Thank you for watching. Uh, this was episode 22 of Innovation Fika. 22 episodes now. Consistency is key, right? Um, we'll keep it going. Tune in next week. Uh, and then another one, just last one there from Seth. Yay, awesome. Go, Victor. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye for today. Bye-bye.